Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Carlos Grill with Living Hope International. Welcome to Are You Ready? Are you ready to serve the Lord? Are you ready for His coming? Are you ready? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? If you haven't, I hope at the end of this program you will do so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for eternal life. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you give us understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, everybody. Let's have our cup of water. Water is good. And the body needs it each and every day. I encourage you to drink some water. Let's drink some water. Mm. It's very good for your body. Well, this evening, we got a lot of major events happening. Uh, the situation in the world. And we're going to get into Bible basics. And we're going to study Bible basics. We're going to have a great study tonight. We're going to talk about the doctrine of man. Doctrine of man. And uh, we're going to be going to the Bible, to Genesis chapter 1. But before we do that, I want to talk about, just briefly, uh, what is happening in the world right now. Well, first of all, I just heard this, uh, and I don't know if you may have heard it in the news, that Russia is preparing for a major, major Arctic war. Major Arctic war. Well, something came out, I saw the picture of it. It's a, a floating nuclear plant, a floating nuclear plant heading to the Arctic. It is huge. Why are they taking a nuclear plant to the Arctic, you would ask? Why are the Russians doing that? Well, because they have found out, and many other nations have known, that it's about 34 to $35 trillion dollars of gas in the Arctic. And this, again, this is something that a lot of nations are looking for. Where can we get energy? And so now they're moving in that direction. China is also heading towards the Arctic. A lot of nations, probably the United States, is heading towards the Arctic too, planning a uh, base there, and I'm sure they may have one already, but the idea of drilling for gas, there's that much there. And so the, the Russians are, are ahead of the United States on that. I don't think the U.S. has gotten a floating nuclear plant heading for the Arctic, but the Russians are doing so. So that is something that to keep an eye on. And also the the uh, the Chinese, and remember I've been mentioning about China. China is getting involved almost in everywhere. They're involved in the Middle East. They say they're willing to give two hundred billion dollars for the rebuilding of Syria. They're involved. They're involved in the com between North Korea. Whatever happens there, they're involved in Taiwan. They want to get. They want Taiwan to be a communist nation. Taiwan doesn't want to be. They want to be independent. And and China does not want them to be independent in any way. And they will they are, they've been practicing flying bombers, flying jets near Taiwan. They're trying to scare the Taiwanese people, you know, from you know, we may consider going in and attacking you. If you think of being independent, you cannot be an independent nation. So the Chinese are doing that. And like I said, they're they're in they're in the Middle East, they're in Asia, but they're also going into the Arctic. Uh, and also remember they're in Iran. In Iran, the the French company Total left and the Iranians the Chinese have come in and said, Okay, we'll take over the highest amount of gas production. In known right now. Now they think there's, there's trillions of dollars in gas in Arctic, but has not been found. But they know that in Iran there is, and China has taken over that. So uh, they are growing economically very strong. The military is growing. 
they're increasing the size of the military more and more and more and more and more each and every day. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, regarding the, the summit on June 12th with North Korea, it's on and off, on and off. It's going back and forth. What's not helping, <laughs> what did not help the situation, because at the beginning, I think he was, and he was very willing to do so, uh, Kim Jong-un. But then we have Pompeo and Bolton. Uh, John Bolton and Mike Pompeo, they kind of, you know, what they call, slip the, the, spill the beans, or they spoke off <laughs> they shouldn't have said. Uh, I understand, this is what they, he got around him, two hawks. These guys are ready to go to war. So, um, so he tells them, we're going to go in there. If you don't do what we say, we're going to destroy you. I mean, hello? And Bolton says, you know, by the way, we're going to follow the Libyan model. And then, then, then King Jong-un is not an idiot. He must not, he's not dumb. Uh, you're saying you're going to follow the king. Wait a minute. What happened to Libya? Ah, wasn't that Gaddafi in Libya? Uh, he turned over all those chemical weapons. Where is he now? Oh, by the way, he got taken over and he was eliminated. So he's thinking, ah, uh, I don't know about that. So if we want to have some sort of agreement with Kim Jong-un, you, these two guys need to be quiet because it's it's not helping the situation. If you want to meet with King Jong-un, but if you don't want with him and you want to go into war, then you go ahead and continue the way you're doing. But if you want to this to for them to come together in agreement, then you need to be quiet because you're just making the situation worse. You're not making it better. You're making it worse. So we'll see what happens there. That's happening. And of course, uh, Iran vows to resume uranium program, the uranium uh, production, if if the EU... Now, right now, the EU, European Union, says they will continue with the uh, JCPOA, okay, which is the Iran, uh, the Iran deal. They say they will continue with it without the United States as long as Iran agrees to it. And the Iranian says, we'll do so. As long as you guys can help us economically, we'll continue to do so. So we'll see. That again, we have, uh, that's tenuous. We are heading toward a possible war, world war. I hope and pray, and we all pray, it does not happen. Again, we pray it does not happen. Okay? That is our prayer, that it will not happen. Uh, so the, but, uh, we've seen these things happening. We got, we got, we got Turkey in, in Syria. We got the Iranians there. Israel bombing into Syria in Iran. There's only, at any moment, Israel is going to go and attack Tehran. And that's just going to set the whole thing on fire. And then, is would the United States invade Iran? That's a question. What do you think? Would the United States, we invaded Iraq, would we invade Iran? If we invade Iran, it will take 300 to probably 400,000 troops if we do a land. Because first of all, we're going to blow them to smithereens. Uh, afterwards, uh, we're going to go in there, and then we're going to have to go in there with troops. And you can, it's going to take, remember, I just want to remind you, Iran, there's a lot of desert, Iran is twice the size of Iraq, okay? And it took two to three hundred thousand, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand soldiers to invade Iraq at the beginning. So, uh, and this is bigger. So if you if they have plans somewhere that they're thinking, well, let's go, we can invade Iran. Let's do it. Well, we're going to have to call up a lot of reserves and you're going to have to probably, now, if you get involved in Iran, 
What are you going to do if North Korea says they're not going to go to the deal? And are you going to invade North Korea? Are you going to land troops on North Korean land? Will it get to that? Then we're talking thousands of more troops. Okay, then you're, you're, you're in Iran. You're also in Syria. Iran, Syria, Iran, North Korea. All right. What if something happens in Venezuela? Because Maduro just won, and we we don't agree with his election. We believe that the election is false. We don't accept the results. We don't want him to be the ruler. So what do we do? We're going to have to topple him and remove Mr. Maduro. I wonder if that's the uh, plan there. Uh, if Maduro does something that we don't like, if he, you know, we just don't like him being there, but if he does some false move, fires at a U.S. ship, whatever, boom, we are in Venezuela. So we're going to put troops in Venezuela. We're going to put troops in Syria. We're going to put troops in Iran. And we're going to put troops in North Korea. Then, wow, where are they going to get all these troops? There's not enough. The U.S. military is not that big. It's a volunteer army. There's only one possibility that could happen. He may bring back the draft. Oh, boy. Uh, no president has done so. The draft was ended under Richard Nixon. Under Richard Nixon, the draft ended. They had no more draft, and the army became volunteer. Would President Trump bring back the draft? That's a question for you to think about. And if he did, that would take a lot of men and women, a lot of people going. I rem Just to remind you, the world has changed a great deal. The mindset of people has changed a great deal. Not everyone is going to want to go to fight in Iran. It's, it, it, it is not going to be good. It's not going to be good. And we can't fight in all these places. We were trying to bring back, you know, remember his idea, President Trump has said that he does not believe in intervention, that he doesn't believe in building, uh, being a police state, but then he, he may end up being one. So we need to keep that in prayer. But all I want to tell you that everything that is happening is all a plan of God. Everything that is happening in North Korea, in North Korea, the Middle East, in the Arctic, everything that I mentioned is all working together for God's divine plan. What? Is to bring, everything is going to turn against Israel, and to bring Jesus Christ back. Everything is leading to the return of Jesus. Are you ready for that? Are you ready? Because any war, let me repeat that, any war fought here in the, United, in the world will come to the United States. And one last thing, thousands of, of, of troops are on high alert in Europe. The Russians are moving troops closer to the border with Latvia, Finland, Belarus, Kaliningrad, opening, uh, they want to be able to open an attack. The Russians are getting ready for an attack into Europe. NATO sees it, and they're trying to move their troops. U.S. troops are there. There are U.S. troops in Poland right now. Uh, could there be a World War III? Yes. We pray that it doesn't happen, but we need to be in prayer. All right. The rest of the time, we're going to go talk about Bible basics. Bible basics. And tonight we're talking about the doctrine of man. What is the doctrine of man? Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start with Genesis chapter 1. I want you to open it up uh, to Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to go to verse 26. To 28, right? 26 to 28. Now, Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. What is the doctrine of man? The doctrine of man teaches that man was directly and immediately created by God in his image and likeness. 
Man was created free of sin with intelligence and self-determination. Man was created to glorify God. It teaches that Adam's sin of disobedience uh, caused him to lose his innocence. Well, let's read right now. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Wow. That is God, the word of God teach, telling, teaching us here that God, God made man in his image. We weren't created on our, by the Big Bang Theory. The two supernovas, I mentioned that before. That's a theory that says two supernovas came together. And then all these stars, all the planets, the galaxy, the Milky Way, everything came about because of a supernova. Now that takes a lot of faith. If you think believing that God created man in the Garden of Eden... In, is, it takes a lot of faith. I think believing the two stars blowing up together, then creating all these earth, and then creating the earth, and then leading up to what we have right now, all came about because of that. That takes a lot of faith. It may take more faith than believing what I believe right here that it's in the Word of God. So, I mean, God created man. Here's a good thing to think about. God did not create male and male, or female and female. He created male and female. Okay? And it, it is God, I want to put it in there, that God instituted marriage. Not man. God did. God is the creator of marriage. It's a beautiful thing that God created to bring a man and a woman together in holy matrimony between one man and one woman. That is the relationship that God created. Now, if you have an issue with that, it's not with me. It's with God. So if you have a problem with what I'm talking about, you have a problem with what's in the Word. The Word of God clearly states that God, God, the creator of the universe, created man and woman and brought them together to what? To multiply. The man and the woman were created to be fruitful and multiply. Two men or two women cannot biologically produce children. Can't happen. God didn't create it that way. He created it for a man and a woman to join together and create children. God did that. Okay? All right. I just wanted to emphasize that. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. Isaiah 43, verse 7. Isaiah 43, verse 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Wow. Let me read that again. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. It says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. We were called what? We were created for what? 
for God's glory. We are created to glorify God. You know, you were created to worship. Every human being has that desire in them to worship. Some people will worship an idol. Some people will worship a tree. Some people will worship themselves. But you all were born created to worship. And God calls us to worship Him, the creator of the universe, Jehovah. Hallelujah. He created us to worship Him. All right, let us go to Psalm 100. These verses that I'm reading to you confirm that we here in the doctrine of man were created by God to worship Him. So, Psalm 100, let's go to Psalm 100, and we're going to go to verses 2 and 3. Psalm 100, verses 2 and 3. Psalm 100, verses 2 and 3. It says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us, and now we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Again, Know that the Lord, He is God. <laughs> he is God. Not you. I'm not God. And you're not God. He is God. Right? It is He who made us. Who made us? God made us. We didn't come from monkeys, ladies and gentlemen. The idea of evolution by uh, Charles Darwin, the, the, the uh, what was the theory of natural selection... Uh, that is something he created in his mind. And he, remember, he was a monk in a monastery. He turned his back on the God he was serving, Jehovah. And he said, he said this can't be true. It says that God, God created us and Adam and Eve, the creation thing. This got to be something else. So he opened himself up to this, and then he created this theory of natural selection, which a, a species that we were born created came up from an amoeba, created, then led out from a a, a, a monkey, a, a chimpanzee, or orangutan, whatever. Then we came off the tree, began to have legs and arms, and we, we got the hair came off and. And we ended up to what we are right now. No. See, God is the one who created us. It's because we have a problem in accepting the idea that God Almighty is the one that made us. We just people have a difficulty with that. And I'm sorry about that, but that is what it is that God is the creator. We didn't create ourselves, He did that. Finally, I want to go to Romans chapter 5. We're about done here. Romans chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Romans chapter 5, 18 to 20. Now here the Apostle Paul is speaking to the church at Rome. And he's talking about the difference between Adam and the new Adam. Okay, the first Adam and the second Adam. Who's the second Adam? Jesus Christ. Here we go. Therefore, as though one man's offense judgment came to all men, that's Adam, resulting in condemnation because of sin, we are condemned, we have the penalty of sin. Even so, one man's righteous act, that's Jesus laying his life on the cross, at the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That's because of the this disobedience of, of uh, Adam, we were all made sinners. He says, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made sinners righteous and Jesus obeyed remember 
he said to the Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. And he went to the cross for you and for me. He did. He laid down his life for you. It says, it says, for verse 4, as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Hallelujah. So that sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin came through the fall of man, of Adam, disobedience. Sin came. Then came the penalty of sin, which is death. Then God sent His Son, the Redeemer, to pay the penalty of sin. And when He paid it, we are no longer condemned. But we need to receive Jesus. Now, if you've never received Christ, this doesn't apply. Only when you repent of your sins and receive Him into your heart, do you then become a new creature. You are forgiven and made new. God wants to make you new. God wants to transform you. Wants to change your life. He loves you a great deal. He loves you a great deal. So this evening, we've been talking about man. How you were created by God to worship Him. Do you know Him this evening? Are you ready for His coming? Are you ready have you surrendered your life to Him? If you haven't, this is the evening. It's raining outside right now. And it is rain's grace of love of God. God loves you. So tonight, I give you this invitation. Jesus Christ died for you. What he's asking you is to receive him into your heart and become a new creature. Do you want him in your life? Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Wash me in your precious blood. From this moment on, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I pray for every single person who say yes to you. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Give them a hunger for your word and connect them to a church where they can be disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. If you gave your life to Christ, welcome to the family of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the family of God. So please, let us know at Christ is our hope at yahoo.com. Christ is our hope at yahoo.com or here on YouTube. Also, I want to pray right now for those who may be sick. Jesus is a healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. He hasn't changed. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. And He wants to touch your body right where you're at. So I want you to put your hand on that part of the body that you're feeling sick right now. Maybe some of you have been feeling like vomiting, or it might be, I believe there's a person who feels like vomiting or nauseous about something. And the Lord is, is, is something maybe you drank or ate and you've been feeling really sick. And the Lord is healing your, in your stomach right now in Jesus' name. The Lord is doing a mighty work in you, the Lord is healing your body. He is doing a work in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He is the healer. He is the healer. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. So if you have bronchitis, I want you to put your hand on your back right now. In the name of Jesus, those bronchioles in, the, in your lungs are opening up correctly. Oxygen is flowing correctly. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. There's an individual. Uh, you may be in the hospital. 
you've had a heart attack uh, and you had to be rushed to the hospital. Uh, I want you to put your hand on that heart right now. In Jesus' name, if you're able to, put your hand on your heart. In Jesus' name, they're doing some tests on you. In the name of Jesus, x-rays, in Jesus' name, you are healed. In Jesus' name. And just give the Lord the glory and the honor. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If the Lord has healed your body, or you have given your life to Christ, let us know at Christ is our hope at yahoo.com. Christ is our hope at yahoo.com. Thank you for being with us. And are you ready? Let other people know. Please subscribe. I just started. What I did is I, I was able to switch and create just a channel specifically called Are You Ready? Instead of just having my name, the title of the program is Are You Ready? So now there's a channel by that name. So please start subscribing. If you did, please subscribe again to this one. If you haven't, please do. And we want to reach as many people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're ever in Augusta, please come visit us. We're in Grotown, Georgia, suburb. We have Sundays at 1 p.m. Our services, we worship Jesus. We pray for the sake. We believe for healing. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven. He is. And we preach the cross and the blood of Jesus. We believe that Jesus heals, delivers, and sets people free. Come join us. Have a great evening in the Lord. And remember, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. One last thing. I, my son and I, my son Carlos and I saw a double rainbow. I did a video you can watch and it was terrific. Reminded me that God's covenant is true and he keeps his promises. God always does, that He will never destroy the earth with a worldwide flood. But when judgment comes, it will be fire, but it won't be a worldwide flood. And it was wonderful to see that God keeps His promises. Have a great evening in the Lord, and remember, live for Jesus. Shalom.